why we need more healthcare professionals in rural Canada. There's a lack of sophisticated diagnostic technology such as MRI and PET scanners in rural areas. This disparity is especially apparent when it comes to the lack of specialists who have professional knowledge to use these technologies, as they are highly concentrated in urban areas. Nine point four percent of Canadian doctors are in rural communities, whereas Canada's rural population represents twenty percent of this total population. In the smaller, more distant communities, educational facilities, spousal job opportunities, religious and cultural access, and the potential mate pool for unmarried physicians are all less available. This leads to the revolving door effect, where physicians set up practice in rural communities and leave shortly after. But why are they leaving? And why are there so few rural doctors to begin with? Between 1996 and 2001, Urban Canada gained 389 MDs at Rural Canada's expense. Currently, only 8% of medical students come from rural areas and only half will choose rural practice, while only 1 in 20 urban-based students will do so. Medical schools should have a larger portion of the curriculum dedicated to rural practice and the availability of rural internships needs to be increased. In addition to the attrition of rural practitioners to urban centers, there's also a lack of Francophone practitioners outside of Quebec. Franco-Canadians are typically older than the general population, and many of the citizens are unilingual, and a great proportion of them are living outside of urban centers. In Ontario, 12% of senior French speakers are unilingual, with 25% of them living in remote regions. In New Brunswick, 32% of the senior French-speaking population are unilingual, whereas this proportion is 45% in rural areas. Even if there were enough healthcare providers, they would need to be conveniently located for patients to be able to take advantage of their services effectively. Eighty percent of Canadians live in rural areas, therefore it should be where most of the healthcare professionals practice. But can we really grant priority of one person's well-being over another based on where they live? As previously mentioned, the 9.4% of rural practitioners is not enough to serve the dispersed population of rural Canadians that make up the remaining 20% of the population. Rural Canadians also have means of transportation to get themselves to urban centres. But unlike urban Canadians, they lack access to public transportation. And with the increasing price of gas, many cannot afford to make trips into the city. Some rural communities can be more than 100 kilometers away from the nearest specialist physician, including obstetricians, pediatricians, and general surgeons. Lastly, urban Canadians argue that rural Canadians have lower wait times to see a doctor. 98% of citizens live within a 30-minute drive of emergency facilities, but a patient in cardiac arrest who is not treated within the first 5 minutes will suffer significant brain injury. The risk of death increases as time continues to pass. For every minute without defibrillation, the likelihood of death increases by 10%. We need better distribution across the country of rural healthcare practitioners and new incentives to reduce attrition towards urban areas. We need to increase the number of seats available in medical schools in Canada, especially for those who have expressed an interest in working in a rural setting. Lastly, we really need to increase resources for rural healthcare facilities and practitioners. 